Hey, in this video, I would like to show you how to set up a self-hosted Git server, which works as a GitHub alternative, for example. We will use Git as the Git server, and we will use Vulture as the cloud service provider. We will configure it in a way that it really works nicely for game development, where you have a lot of heavy binary files. So we will, for example, configure Git LFS that all the files will be on an object storage, which is infinitely scalable. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is to create a Vulture account and we will go to vulture.com and there we need to sign up for an account. So Vulture is an infrastructure as a service provider similar to AWS or Google Cloud. So we are choosing Vulture because they already have a Git installation. So if you go to their marketplace, there is a setup for Git, which is basically working out of the box. So we don't need to deal with Docker or any kind of other things. All right. So when you register to Vulture, you will be asked for a credit card. And what you can do is, if you scroll down to the bottom, under resources, you can click on coupons. Then you can get a $200 coupon if you basically use this coupon code at sign up. So definitely use it so you start with some free credits to try out if this is really the right option for you. All right, then go to the setup page and create an account. And then we will meet you on the other side on the dashboard. So once you completed all the profile steps, you entered your credit card information and hopefully the coupon, you can start to deploy a new instance. Basically what you're gonna do is go here under the deploy button and then we click on deploy new server. So we pick the shared CPU because that's totally enough for us. And then we're gonna pick a location. So in this case, because I'm located in uh, Germany, so I will pick Frankfurt, Germany. Then the next thing will be choosing an image. And here we're gonna click on marketplace apps and search for Git and we're gonna pick the Gitty application. So let's scroll down and pick our plan. I have found out that the 50 gig machine with one core and two gigs is fine for me. I don't care so much about the storage because I will later add object storage to this and this is basically our scalable storage that we can extend to infinity basically. Then for additional features, I always recommend to keep the auto backup on in case something breaks and we can leave everything as it is. And finally, we just need to enter a name. In this case, I will enter Gitty server and now I'll click on deploy now. So here you will see that the status is set to installing and now you have to wait until the installation is basically finished. So, all right, our Git server is up and running and to test it, we need to go to the server settings, so to the server details and there we need to copy the IP address and bring this to another tab, paste it and then we see that the Git server is currently active. So now we could basically work with that. So if we click on sign in, now it asks us for username and password. What kind of username and password should we enter? So the main admin user and the main admin password is located in the configuration files on our server. So to access the configuration files, we cannot do this here from the web interface. We need an external application, an FTP client, something like FileZilla. So go to filezillaproject.org and then download the latest FileZilla application. And then we will connect here to the server via the IP address and the username and password. So I already have FileZilla installed here. And in FileZilla, I will create a new site here in the top left corner. Now I will create a new site by naming this Git And then here on the protocol, we switch this to SFTP. Then the host will be our IP address that we already pasted here into the web browser. The user is root as mentioned here. And for the password, we just copy it over and then we bring this over to FileZilla. And we click on OK. Good, now here we can drop it, select it and then connect it. And we can trust it always here, it's fine for us. And now we can access all the configuration files of our Git server. The first file that we see here is the so-called Git password. And this Git password, I would like to bring over to the desktop. So now I brought over my Git password, it's uh, like a text file that I can bring over here. And this is what I can open up in a text editor, like VS Code, for example. Good, so if you open this up in a text editor, you should see something like Git password and then in quotation marks the whole password. This is something that you have to copy over and paste it and the username is called git slash admin. Now, if you click sign in, we are basically here at the backend of Git. Now we can basically create repositories. So to create a new repository, we click on the plus here. Let's name this just test with text files and we're gonna make the repository private. The reason why I would like to do this is because then I can easily log in directly when I clone this repository. And let me scroll down, I can leave everything as it is, and we click on create repository. So now we have the HTTP link, and this is what we're gonna to copy to clipboard. In the next step, we'll use a git client to push files to this repository. 
If I get my Git client right now, I'm using anchor point, but you can use also any Git client of your choice. I need to go to the products page here by creating a new tab, and then I scroll down to new project. And here I pick Git repository, and I browse to the folder where I have my files, and in the remote settings, I pick connect via HTTPS. And here I'm pasting the link. So now anchor point is checking the Git credentials, and this tab can take a while. And of course, it cannot log in because it doesn't have any username and password provided from Git. So now you see this button here, Git credentials, log into Git. I have to click on that. And this will open up, first of all, Git where I need to authorize anchor point. And if this is showing up, that's normally not a big deal because the authorization is complete right now. So let me go back to anchor point and we can go to the next step because now the Git credentials are authorized. Click on continue, we leave the name as it is. We click on continue, we don't need to add any member and we wanna create the project here. All right, so the project is basically a very, very simple folder with a readme file. I don't wanna add more. I don't want to add binaries at the moment because we have not configured um, Git for LFS that it puts LFS files on object storage. That's why I'm only putting text files here. So let me just add initial commit and press sync. All right, so let me check on Git if the commit has arrived. Let me close this page here. And now I need to press F5 to refresh the page. And our initial commit is basically there. Here, initial commit and the readme file, this is a test, is there. So basically, if we just would like to work with code with very light files, we can already work with that. To make this server more scalable for game development, where we have a lot of binary files, we need to configure git lfs that it puts all the files on an object storage. An object storage is basically like an infinitely scalable disk, where storage is also cheaper than on a virtual drive. So if we go back to Vulture, on our server, we have only 50 gigabytes of storage in this case, which is not a lot. What we wanna add is scroll up and then deploy an object storage. So here for the location, we pick an European location like Amsterdam. We can give it a label. I would call it Gitty Storage. And we click on Add. So now we also need to wait until this is installed. So once our object storage is ready here, we want to manage it. And we click on the pencil icon and then we want to create a new bucket here. We click on Bucket and we click on Create New Bucket. And the bucket is basically like a virtual hard drive. We just name this Gitty. That's totally fine. And we leave everything as it is here. We click on Create Bucket and the bucket should be successfully created right now. All right, good, this is basically our bucket. And now let me go to the overview. And these are all the settings we need to now enter to our Gitty configuration. So for that, I need to bring over FileZilla again. So here we need to go one step up and here that we basically are in the root of everything. So now we need to search for var, then snap, then Gitty, then common, and then conf. And this is basically the configuration file app.ini, which we need to modify. And I will open up a code editor, and this is basically how it looks like. The first thing what we need to do is add a new configuration here on the server. And this one is called LFS start server equals true. And by the way, I will add all these description parameters in the description below. We need to create a new section called storage. So storage type should be min.io, serve direct should be equal to true. And now we need to add endpoint access key and our secret access key. And these are all individual parameters what you will get from your Vulture configuration. So I'll move this on the side. Let me first add these parameters here. And first of all, the endpoint. And that's basically your host name. Just copy this over and paste it here. Then the next thing is the access key. That's this one here. Copy this over, paste it in and the secret access key. That's the secret key. Copy it over and paste it in here. Then the bucket name, and that's basically this one here, what we added here, git t, and our location. So the location here for Amsterdam is basically Amsterdam, which we can add here as well. And the final entry we're gonna add is use min.io SSL, and we set this to true. And that should be all of it. We need to save this, and now we need to bring this to our remote server. For that, we will open up FileZilla again, and now we'll move over our app ini, which is currently on a desktop. This is where, where I edited this file. I will bring this over here, and I would like to override it. Now we uploaded the new version of our configuration. So to test if it works, we need to restart our Git server. So let me go back to the dashboard, Git server, and here I will click on server restart. And we're gonna restart the Git server. So you can always go back. And now 
It will take usually a while until it restarted, so just give it a minute, and then you can refresh the page and see if the server still works. So, all right, we can go to our Git server and then refresh the page, and if it still refreshes, the server still works. Otherwise, you would get an error or something like that. So if you get an error and you would like to debug it, there is one thing that you can add to your configuration file, and this is basically a log output. So if we, for example, open up our configuration file back, if you need some more debugging information, just enter this element here, and this will then print out a log file that you can download from the server, and then you see basically where the problems are in this case. All right, but now let me test this with anchor point again, and this time we will gonna use a real project where we'll upload binary files to our Git server. So for that, I go back to my Git server, go to the main page, and I would like to create a new repository by clicking on the plus icon. And we make a test, and the repository should be private again. So I will create a repository, and I will copy over the link and paste it into anchor point. Let me bring up anchor point here, and create a new tab, and here under new projects, I would like to create a new project. I pick on Git repository and I browse to the folder of my Unreal Engine project right now. Good, for the remote settings, we pick on connect existing repository via HTTPS and we paste the link here and everything is fine like it is. We don't need to download everything. We click on continue. We click on continue again and we're gonna create the project. All right, our Unreal Engine project is ready so far and now we click on the changed files and make an initial commit. In the first step, anchor point will basically look at all the binary files and mark them as LFS, and then it will create automatically the commit and afterwards the push. So we are currently pushing the git changes and hopefully they will be on our object storage and not on our virtual disk. Okay, the push is successful and let us check. We go back to our Gitty server, let's refresh this here, and basically all the files are here. So for example, if I click on the content, the materials, this should be marked here, start with git lfs. So let me check on Vulture if this is set correctly. So if you go to Vulture, you go to our dashboard, let me scroll down, click on our object storage on the git t storage, and here we click on buckets, on our git t bucket, and there is a folder created called lfs. And if you click on it, we see that all these folders are created by git lfs, and here we can make sure that we have configured git lfs correct, and all of our binary files will be stored into this bucket. So that's basically all how you configure Gitty with LFS here. There is one thing that you may need to add when it comes to security. Let me go back to the dashboard. So the issue we're having right now that we are connecting via a not secure HTTP connection without any encryption. And you would like to use a custom domain here and an HTTPS connection. So for that, the first thing what you need to do is to go to your domain provider and add a custom domain plus two A-level records. So this is how it looks like for us. We have a custom domain called gitty.anchorpoint.app and we have these two A records, one for gitty and one for www.gitty. And um, what you need to do here is enter the IP of your service. So if the user enters, for example, this subdomain, he should land at the IP of your server in this case. So this is what you have to do on your domain provider and this is, can be different depending on the domain provider you have. And then we need to adjust also the Git config. So let me bring this over. And under server, the first thing what you need to do is to change this to HTTPS. Then the main should be your domain. The port should be 443. And then you need to add these three things as well. The enable ACME and the other things that are definitely important to make this work. So then if you adjusted that, save this, bring this over to FileZilla and upload this configuration. And then at the end, of course, you need to restart your server here so that this configuration takes effect at all. The final thing what I would like to add is a bit more convenience thing. Let's say you work with a team on your Git server and you don't want that people need to learn the Git interface. What you can also do, you can go to anchor point and if you create a new tab here and you scroll down to integrations and connect application, there is also a Git integration that if you configure it correctly, allows you to create repositories and add members here directly from anchor point. And this would make it very easy also for your artists to create their own repositories without any kind of configuration required. All right, I hope this video was helpful and it could help you to set up a self-hosted Git server on the cloud. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.